you know, it's it's the rate of inflation that's slowing. Inflation is still growing. I mean, that's, you know, we, we talk about it all the time. That's the misnomer. That's, you know, people are getting confused uh, as to, uh, you know, the rate of growth versus, you know, it, it actually going the other way, you know. But uh, yeah, and, and it's going to continue. I, I think it's it's going to continue all the way through the election. You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network. Now, more than ever. And welcome. You are listening to and watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz. Well, inflation, no shock there. The PPI, no shock there. Inflation goes up. Government jobs go up. Is there a correlation there? Well, here to opine is Ed Seidel. Ed, great to have you back on the show. So, what of all of these numbers? Uh, uh, is that the sign of a healthy economy, like like some would have you believe, or is it just uh, business as usual? Well, you, you know, it depends on the side of the fence, right? I mean, business as usual, as the powers that be want you to think, um, they they kind of shrugged off the numbers, and you know, it's it, it's always been a fallacy. It, it's kind of like the the conversation of transitory inflation. Right, it's mm-hmm. it's, it's going to go away. Um, I mean, last year they should have kept raising rates um, because it, when when you add you know over half the jobs that were added uh, last year were either part time or some sort of governmental job. I mean, that's that's all inflationary. I mean, we continue to overspend. That's inflationary. Um, you know, the fact that CPI and PPI numbers were up, I, I, everyone's acting like they're shocked, including the markets, but. How can you look at it and and be surprised at all? I mean, when you go to the gas station, you go to the grocery store, everything just keeps increasing. Um, that, and it's not going away anytime soon. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, But the inflation rate's coming down, so we should all be happy and, uh, and really uh, have a party, right? Yeah. You know, I did hear that, uh, that uh, I, I, I guess uh, the administration by and actually said, well, you know, when I took off office, it was 9.1%. Uh, and, and, you know, now it's down in the threes. Well, it was 9.1, but when he took office, I think it was like 1.4, it was below 2%. I, I want to say 1.4. Don't quote me on that. Probably want to check that. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's the rate of inflation that's slowing. Inflation is still growing. I mean, that's, you know, we, we talk about it all the time. That's the misnomer. That's, you know, people are getting confused uh, as to, uh, you know, the rate of growth versus, you know, it, it actually going the other way, you know. But uh, yeah, and, and it's going to continue. I, I think it's it's going to continue all the way through the election. We keep overspending, but the feds have really backed themselves into a corner, um, mm-hmm. you know, because they didn't raise rates. They're going to continue to, I think, in, in my opinion, you know, and what we believe is that they're going to continue to talk about lowering rates mm-hmm. uh, and be lower once, but they can't raise rates. They're, I mean, they're political animals. Um and uh, it's an election say, year. Oh, I'd say it's not. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm, I'm shocked. <laughs> hey, did you happen to catch the um, um, guy's name, O'Keefe, and his undercover recording with a certain uh, Fed officer who said he hates Trump, that he writes speech, this guy writes speeches for Powell, Powell despises Trump, he did everything he could to see that he was defeated in the last election, and he's doing the same now, and they don't. They're more concerned about woke issues than they are about the economy. I mean, it was shocking, but not really. I mean, it was shocking in that I, somebody yeah. actually admitted it. What we already knew. I, you know, what I did hear something about it. I didn't know to the the breadth of of the the recording, but uh, like you said, I'm. I, I'm not shocked. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm pleasantly surprised we were actually able to record it. But, you know, it, it's not going to change anything. Um, it, you know, when you continue to see gas prices go up, uh, it, it, I mean, it's it's going to be the pain at the pumps and the pain at the grocery store. Uh, you know, when you go in the garage, I was talking to a buddy of mine and, you know, it's, he's a, an, a, an attorney. Um, and it was the first time he went grocery shopping, I think, in, in a couple months. And... 
He was telling the story. He he came out with three bags and it was ninety four dollars. And he was like, I, "What happened?" I, it's he was shocked. Um, and you know, and that's the, the, that's what the, it's that pain. You know, the disparity between the continued disparity between Main Main Street and Wall Street. Um, and it's mm. it's not getting any better. It's a solid recession. Yeah. Well, we've been in a recession, but they changed the definition of it, right? Yeah. Well, I you know I think last time we talked about it. I mean, Powell even said. Uh, I think it was 2022, I think it was 2022, during an interview, there was a video of it where he said, you know, if if the short-term yield curve, if it's inverted, inverted yield curve, uh, short-term rates are higher than long-term rates for 18 months or more, you know, it's a recession no matter how you define it. And yet he's saying we're not in a recession. So, yeah, it's we've been here. We know it. They just don't want to admit it. Um, and they can't raise rates because- It'll affect the commercial uh, markets and real estate, uh, the banks, and you know they they uh, they they only have one one bullet left in in the gun, and that is uh, you know to to lower rates or at least keep talking about it. Yeah. Well, so um, yeah. So you think they're ever going to lower rates in the next year, or, or what's going to happen? You, you know what? Um, if they do, it's going to be a, a token, uh, maybe a quarter percent. Um, and the, the markets are going to, to like it to a certain degree, but you know, you, you've got that window between now and the election and that runway, that window is closing. It's, it's getting really, really narrow. Um, and no matter what, I think after the election, there's, there's going to be some sort of reckoning. And, and that's why, you know, we talk about this all, you and I talk about this all the time. I mean, I really like hard assets, commodities, Mm -hmm. um, gold all-time high. I still think silver is way undervalued. Um, and the reason that the, these prices have come up so high is that people, there's there's a reality check that, that people are, are are looking for some safe havens. They they see what's coming. Yep. And uh, what's coming ain't pretty, is it? No. No, it's not. Um, and, and it, you know, the the leadership problems that we have, and it doesn't matter, uh, Republicans, Democrats, I mean, that there's a leadership issue. We continue to, to kick this can down the road. Nobody wants to do it, make the tough decision, because it's all about getting reelected in the power. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're the ones who are, are going to wind up paying for it um, through taxes and inflation. It's a tax. It's always the case, Ed. Always the case. So, uh Hey, any thoughts on uh, what Bitcoin's been doing lately? You know, I I, I think the run up has uh, more to do with the cash on the sidelines and the ETFs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, people want to get involved in using ETFs; they feel it's a little bit safer. Uh, this having event that is projected to happen, you know, sometime at the end of this month, beginning beginning of May. Um, you know, I I think that that's probably you know typically what happens is it 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 peaks up and then it drops down. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see what happens with the ETFs, um, you know, what the impact is going to have on, on, on the having situation. Um, it's, it's volatile. I don't think it is a safe haven by any stretch of the imagination. I still think it, it's kind of, I, I'm in it. Uh, I also have Ethereum, um, you know, full disclosure. Um, I, I, I think it, of it more of a lottery ticket. But because it's it's been validated with the the ETFs, uh, I think it's going to be um, we're, we're going to see more cash in it than than we have in in past having events. Really, really. Okay. Well, I, I think so. There's a lot of money there. Even China in Hong Kong started an ETF. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, man. I just got news in here. It appears that O.J. Simpson died. Not that that has anything to do with anything here, right? Oh, wow. Really? It was 76. Wow. Go figure. Well, yeah. Well, at least uh, you could say uh, maybe it's further proof that only the good die young, or maybe uh, maybe the bad sometimes die younger, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yep. Uh, the maybe the latter of the two for sure. Yeah. Uh, so uh, anyway, getting back to the topic here, people, if things really start to get bad, inflation obviously it's understated dramatically. They said three and a half percent, so that means eight or nine percent easily. 
I mean, look what's happened at the uh, gas pump lately, right? Yeah, you know, I mean, so the formula for inflation has never changed. It's it's the variables, right? And 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 you know that the the old saying there's lies, there's damn lies and there's statistics, right? It's it's mm-hmm. what they're using to to generate inflation and if you actually look at the way that they used to calculate it, I I agree with you, Gary. I mean, it's I you know, Eight and nine percent, um, you know, if it's three, and and you know that the Federal Reserve has no idea what they're doing. Um, in Powell's speech in March, uh, about a month ago, you know, he was talking about changing the target from two percent, which is arbitrary, um, to you know between three and four. Uh, that means that they have no idea how to control inflation other than raising rates, and you know that they can't do that because. You know, based on the, you know, FMOC uh, chair and, and uh, you know, those taped conversations, you know, they're not going to allow that to happen um, because they're 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 not going to allow the outcome uh, of uh, of Trump. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Hey, so the uh, two year Treasury, I think it's four and a half now. Right. Yeah. Yep. And the what the uh, Fed funds is at five and a quarter, five and a half. Five, yep, um, and and I just saw the ten-year Treasury came down. Well, it, it's been it's been a couple hours since I saw it, but I think it was down like uh, three point nine basis points. Um, so inverted yield curve, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and you know, again, just it it just it, economics one hundred and one, econ one hundred and one. The, these are the basics. Well, at least when you and I were in school, I, you know, I don't know what they're being taught now. Um, more Keynesian theory for sure. <laughs> um, Probably DEI is more important than money supply. <laughs> Did you see that there? That's actually part of the the curriculum for college for kids to be able to graduate in some colleges. I just saw that on, on the news today. It's like, Not in good- Florida anymore. They passed a law against it, and uh, they fired all the DEI people in the Florida colleges. They're gone. And uh, oh, really, yeah. So, hey, uh, you know, I'll tell you, like, the electorate's changing. I think they're on to the grift of our current government, they're on to the scams, and they're fed up with it. And I think come November, we're going to see the results. You know, uh, who has it? A wise man once said, You can fool some of the people some of the time. You can fool, I think it was Lincoln who said it, all of the people some of the time. But you can't fool all of the people all of the time. And that's what we're coming down to here, Ed. Yeah. You, you know, and here's the only thing that unnerves me. Um, it's the uh, the borders. You know, everyone's focused on the southern border. Um, but, you know, it's it's as bad, you know, coming in from Canada, too. So I'm just going to say border in general. I mean, when you have uh, a, a population burst of, of you know, I, th- I think it's close to 11 million people. And, you know, that's that's more than most states. A lot of states. Yeah. Um, you know, the impact when, when you have to have no ID, um, they're giving you a phone, they're, they're paying, um, and now all of a sudden you can register to vote. Um, you know, I, that's, how is that going to affect, you know, not the popular folk, but the electorate, um, you know, the electoral college. Well, you know, all this academic, we're going to find out, uh, in just a little under, uh, seven months here. And, yeah. uh, and just tell us where we find you, how we connect with you on the web. Uh, EGSIfinancial.com. That is the best place to find us, uh, our podcast, YouTube channel, and uh, all of our information. Perfect. Links in the show notes to this interview on financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Go there, click through, you'll get any site. While you're there, sign up for your free newsletter, questions, comments, email kl at kerryletz.com. Ed, always a pleasure. We'll talk to you in a little while. All right. Thanks for having me, Carrie. Thanks for listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.